Hello, I am Nuru Lathar, PMPC Pitch Amazon Adrial Certified and welcome to my presentation on PIMBA Guide 7th edition. In this part, we are going to explore artifacts. So, let us start artifacts. First, we will see some commonly used artifacts. An artifact is a template, document, output or project deliverable. There are many documents or deliverables that are not described here either because a they are somewhat generic such as update, b they are industry specific or c they are result of a specific methods that was used to create it. For example, while cost estimates are an important artifact, they are the result of various estimating methods. The content in this section is not meant to be described how to develop or create an artifact. The descriptions are presented at high level as project manager and our project team members are expected to tailor the use of these artifacts to meet the needs of their particular project. There is more detailed information on these and other artifacts from many sources including PMI Standard Plus. We will explore strategy artifacts, log and registers, plans, hierarchy charts, baseline, visual data and information, reports, agreements and contracts and other artifacts. So let us start with strategy artifacts. Document data are created prior to or at the start of the project that address strategy, business or high level information about project. Strategy artifacts are developed at the start of a project and do not normally change, though they may be viewed throughout the project. Business case, business model and canvas, project brief, project charter, project vision statement and roadmap. So let's see business case. A business case is value or position for a proposed project that may include financial and non-financial benefits. Business model canvas. This artifact is one pairs visual summary that describes the value proposition, infrastructure, customers and finances. These are often used in lean startup situation. Project brief. A project brief provides high level overview of the goals, deliverables and process for the project. Project charter. A project charter is a document issued by the project initiator or sponsor that formally authorizes the existence of project and provides the project manager with the authority to apply organizational resources to project activities. Project vision statement. This document is concise high level description of the project that is state the purpose and inspire the project team to contribute to the project. Roadmap. This document provides high level timeline that depicts milestones significant events, reviews and decision point. Now I see log and registers. Logs and registers are used to record continuously evolving aspects of the project. They are updated throughout the project. The terms log and register are sometimes used interchangeably. It is not uncommon to see term risk register or risk log referring to the same artifact. Assumption log. An assumption is a factor that is considered to be true, real or certain without proof or demonstration. A constraint is a factor that limits the options for managing a project, program, portfolio or process. An assumption log records all assumptions and constraints throughout the project. 
backlog. A backlog is an ordered list of work to be done. Project may have product backlog, a requirement backlog, impediment backlogs, and so forth. Item in backlog are prioritized. The prioritized work is then scheduled for upcoming iteration. Change log. A change log is a comprehensive list of changes submitted during project and their current status. A change can be a modification to any formally controlled deliverable, project management plan, component or project document. Issue log. An issue is current condition or situation that may have an impact on the project objectives. An issue log is used to record and monitor information on active issues. Issues are assigned to a responsible party for follow-up and resolution. Lessons learned register. Lesson learned register is used to record knowledge gained during a project phase or iteration so that it can be used to improve future performance for the project team and or the organization. Risk adjusted backlog. A risk adjusted backlog is Backlog that includes work and actions to address threats and opportunities. Risk register. A risk register is a repository in which outputs of risk management processes are recorded. Information in risk register can include person responsible for managing the risk, probability impact risk, score, planned risk, responses, and other information used to get high level understanding of individual risk. Stakeholder register. A stakeholder register records information about project stakeholders, which includes an assessment and classification of project stakeholders. Now we'll see plans. A plan is a proposed means of accomplishing something. Project team develop plans for individual aspects of a project and are combined all of that information into an overarching project management plan. Plans generally are written documents but may also be reflected on visual, virtual whiteboards. Change control plan. A change control plan is a component of the project plan that establishes the change control board. Documents the extent of its uh, authority and describe how the change control system will be implemented. Communication management plan. This plan is a component of the project or portfolio management plan that describe how, when and why, whom information about the project will be administered and disseminated. Cost management plan. This plan is a component of project or program management plan that describes how costs will be planned, structured and controlled. Iteration plan. This plan is detailed plan for the current iteration. Procurement management plan. This plan is component of project or program management plan that describes how a project team will acquire goods and services from outside of the performing organization. Project Management Plan. The Project Management Plan is a document that describes how the project will be executed, monitored, and controlled and closed. Quality Management Plan. This plan is a component of project or program management plan that describes how applicable policies, procedures, and guidelines will be implemented to achieve the quality objectives. Release Plan. This plan sets expectation for the dates, features and or outcomes expected to be delivered over the course of multiple iteration. Requirement management plan. This plan is a component of project or program management plan that describes how requirements will be analyzed, documented and managed. Resource management plan. This plan is component of the project management plan that describes how project resources are acquired, allocated, monitored, and controlled. Risk management plan. This plan is a component of project, program, or portfolio management plan that describes how risk management activities will be structured and performed. Scope management plan. 
This plan is a component of the project or program management plan that describes how the scope will be defined, developed, monitored. A schedule management plan. This plan is a component of the project or program management plan that establishes the criteria and activities for developing, monitoring and controlling the schedule. A stakeholder engagement plan. This plan is a component of the project management plan that identifies the strategies, actions required to promote productive involvement of stakeholders in project or program decision making and execution test plan. This document describes deliverables that will be tested, tests that will be conducted and processes that will be used in testing. It forms the basis for formally testing the components and deliverables. Hierarchy charts. Hierarchy charts begin with high level information that is progressively decomposed into greater levels of detail. The information at the upper levels encompasses all the information at the lower or subsidiary levels. Hierarchy charts are often progressively elaborated into greater levels of details as more information is known about the project. Organizational breakdown structure. This chart is a hierarchical representation of the project organization which illustrates the relationship between project activities and the organizational units that will perform those activities. Product breakdown structure. This chart is hierarchical structure reflecting a project's components and deliverables. Resource breakdown structure. This chart is hierarchical representation of resources by category and type. Risk breakdown structure. This chart is hierarchical representation of potential sources of risk. Work breakdown structure. This chart is hierarchical decomposition of total scope of work to be carried out by the project team to accomplish project objectives and create the required deliverables. Baseline. Baseline is approved version of work, product or plan. Actual performance is compared to baseline to identify variances. Budget. A budget is the approved estimate for the project or any work breakdown structure, WBS component or any schedule activities. Milestone schedule. This type of schedule presents milestones with planned dates. Performance measurement. Baseline. Integrated scope schedule and cost baseline are used for comparison to manage, measure and control project execution. Project schedule. A project schedule is an output of a schedule model that presents linked activities with planned dates, durations, milestones and resources. Scope Baseline This baseline is approved version of a scope statement, work breakdown structure, WBS and its associated WBS dictionary that can be changed using formal change control procedures and is used as the basis for comparison to actual results. Now we will see next that is visual data and information. Visual data and information are artifacts that organize and present data and information in a visual format such as charts, graphs, matrices and diagrams. Visualizing data makes it easier to absorb data and turn it into information. Visualization artifacts are often produced after data have been collected and analyzed. These artifacts can aid in decision making and prioritization. Affinity diagram. This diagram shows large numbers of ideas classified into groups for review and analysis. Burn down, burn up chart. This chart is a graphical representation of the work remaining in a time box or the work completed toward the release of a product or project deliverable. Cause and effect diagram. 
This diagram is visual representation that helps trace an undesirable effect back to its root cause. Cumulative flow diagram CFD. This chart indicates features completed over time, features in development and those in the backlog. It may also include features at intermediate state such as features designed but not yet constructed, those in quality assurance or those in testing. Cycle time chart. This diagram shows the average cycle time of the work items completed over time. A cycle time chart may be shown as a scatter diagram or bar chart. Dashboard. This set of charts and graphs shows progress or performance against important measures of the project. Flow chart. This diagram depicts the inputs, processes, actions and outputs of one or more processes within a system. Gan chart. This bar chart provides schedule information where activities are listed on the vertical axis dates are shown on the horizontal axis and activity durations are shown as horizontal bars placed according to start and finish dates. Histogram This bar chart shows the graphical representation of numerical data information radiator. This artifact is visible physical display that provides information to rest of the organization enabling timely knowledge sharing. Lead time chart. This diagram shows the trend over time of the average lead time of the items completed in work. A lead time chart may be shown as a scatter diagram or a bar chart. Prioritization matrix. This matrix is a scatter diagram where effort is shown on the horizontal axis and value on the vertical axis divided into four quadrant to classify items by priority. Project schedule network diagram. This graphical representation shows the logical relationship among the project schedule activities requirement traceability matrix. This matrix links product requirements from their origin to the deliverables that satisfy them. Responsibility assignment matrix. <coughs> this matrix is grid that shows the project resources assigned to each work package. Uh, RACI chart is a common way of showing stakeholders who are responsible, accountable, consulted or informed and are associated with project activities, decisions and deliverables. A scatter diagram. This graph shows the relationship between two variables. S curve. This graph displays cumulative cost over a specified period of time. A stakeholder engagement assessment matrix. This matrix compares current and desired stakeholder engagement levels. Story map. A story map is a visual model of all the features and functionality desired for a given product, created to give the project team a holistic view of what they are building and why. Throughput chart. This chart shows the accepted deliverables over time. A throughput chart may be shown as a scatter diagram or a bar chart diagram. Huge case. This artifact describes and explores how a user interacts with a system to achieve a specific goal. Value stream map. This is a lean enterprise method used to document, analyze and improve the flow of information or materials required to produce a product or service for a customer. Value stream maps can be used to identify waste. Velocity chart. This chart tracks the rate at which the deliverables are produced, validated and accepted within a predefined interval. Now we'll see reports. 
Reports are former records or summaries of information. Reports communicate relevant, usually summary level information to stakeholders. Often reports are given to stakeholders who are interested in the project status, such as sponsors, business owners, or PMOs. See, quality report. This project document includes quality management issues, recommendations for corrective actions, and a summary of findings from quality control activities. It may include recommendations for process, project, and product improvements. Risk reports. This project document is developed progressively throughout the risk management processes and summarizes information on individual project risk and the level of overall project risk. Status reports. This document provides a report on the current status of the project. It may include information on progress since the last report and forecast for cost and schedule performance. Now you see agreement and contracts. An agreement is any document or communication that defines the intentions of the parties. In project, agreements take the form of contract or other defined understandings. A contract is mutually binding the agreement that obligates the seller to provide a specified product, service, or result and obligates the buyer to pay for it. There are different types of contracts, some of which fall within a category of fixed price or cost reimbursable contracts. Fixed price contracts. This category of contract involves setting a fixed price for well defined product, service, or result. Fixed price contracts include Form fixed price FFP, fixed price incentive fee, FPIF, and fixed price with economic price adjustment FP dash EPA, among others. Cost reimbursable contracts. This category of contracts involve payments to the seller of for actual cost incurred for completing the work plus fee representing seller profit. These contracts are often used when the project scope is not well defined or is subjected to frequent change. Cost reimbursable contracts include cost plus award fee CPAF, cost plus fixed fee CPFF and cost plus incentive fee CPIF. Time and material. This contract establishes a fixed rate but not precise statement of work. It can be used for staff, augmentation, subject matter expertise, or other outside support. Now we we'll see indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, IDIQ. This contract provides for an indefinite quantity of goods or service with a stated lower and upper limit and within fixed time period. These contracts can be used for architectural engineering or information technology engagements. Other agreements. The other types of agreements include Memorandum of Understanding MOU, Memorandum of Agreement MOA, Service Level Agreement SLA, Basic Ordering Agreement BOA, among others. Now we will see the last, that is other artifacts. Other artifacts. The documents and deliverables described here do not fit into a specific category. They are important artifacts. They are used for a variety of purposes. Activity list. This document provides a tabulation of schedule activities that shows the activity description, activity identifier, and sufficiently detailed scope of work description so project team members understand what work is to be performed. Bid documents. Bid documents are used to request proposal from prospective sellers. Depending on the goods or services needed, bid documents can include, among others,
request for information RFI, request for quotation RFQ and request for proposal RFP. Matrix Matrix describe an attribute and how to measure it. Project calendar This calendar identifies working days and shifts that are available for scheduled activities. Requirements and documentation This document is the record of product requirements and relevant information needed to manage the requirements, which includes the associated category priority and acceptance criteria. Project Team Charter This document records the project team values, agreements and operating guidelines and establishes clear expectation regarding acceptable behavior by project team members. Use Story A Use Story is a brief description of an outcome for a specific user, which is a uh, promise of uh, conversation to clarify detail. Now we will see artifacts applied across performance domains. Different artifacts are more likely to be useful in different performance domains. While the delivery approach, product and organizational environment will determine which artifacts are most applicable for a specific project, there are some performance domains that are more likely to make use of specific artifacts. Table 4-3 Mapping of artifacts likely to be used in each performance domain. Table 4 3 suggests performance domains where each artifact is more likely to be of use. However, the project manager and our project team has the ultimate responsibility for selecting and tolerating the artifact for their project. I request please pause this video here and read yourself. Okay, that brings us to end up my presentation. Thanks for watching. I hope you would have found this information useful. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel.